Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for October 22nd, 2020. I'm teaching a series entitled Greater is Coming for you. And I hope that you got it by now. Greater is coming. Greater. I'm going to keep saying it. I want you to receive it. Greater is coming for you. God has plans for you that he made from the foundations of the world. And as you submit to God's kingdom plans and purposes and God's plans manifest right before your very eyes, you will realize, recognize, acknowledge that greater is coming. For you, we serve a God of progression and not a God of regression, forward ever, backward never, the best is yet to come. So this is part 52 of the series. Um, I trust that you've really been enjoying this series. We've been studying the life of David, been teaching on faith and patience. This is Greater is Coming, part 52, and the title of today's message is Why You Need Rest. Look at me. You need rest. There's three parts of you. You are a tripartite being like God is a tripartite being. God is Father, Son, Spirit. We are spirit, soul, body. There's three parts of us. And one of those parts of us is a body, a physical body that needs rest. Another part of us is a soul. Our soul is comprised of our mind, our emotions, and our will. Our thinker, our feeler, our chooser. The way we think, the way we feel, the way we make decisions. That soul needs rest. I mean, like, you know, if not, you're going to mess around. And, and, and you will make poor decisions. You're going to make poor choices if you don't get the proper rest. So today we cross over into 1 Samuel chapter 27. I'm going to cover 1 Samuel chapter 27 verses 1 through 4. Uh, just four verses here. Uh, and in these four verses, we see that David, in my opinion, made a, a major mistake because he was tired. So let's talk about it. So here we are, chapter 27. David was just like frustrated. He was tired of running from Saul. He was tired of dealing with the situation. He was tired of, like he's out there in the on the run with 600 men. He has two brand new wives. He's trying to manage all of this. Saul is constantly coming after him. He pronounced a curse over Saul and that's it. And so he was so tired that the Bible says that he thought to himself, man, someday Saul is going to get me. Like, like, Saul, no, David, you shouldn't be thinking like that. But he thought to himself, man, someday Saul is going to get me. I'm saying that, listen, even the best of us that that are born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, called according to God's plan and work and purpose for our life, even the best of us, if if you get tired, like if you get frustrated, if, if you get burnt out, then you are going to accept negative thoughts. And he thought to himself, man, someday Saul is going to get me. Like, I mean, I've been running, God, like I just stood there and I was like, no, you will never touch me. And it was three against 3000. And I had confidence and I had boldness and I had all of this, but he got tired. And when you get tired, you think crazy. And when you get tired, you accept thoughts from Satan. And he thought to himself, man, someday Saul is going to get me. I, I, I don't know, man. Maybe, I, maybe I'm not going to. And this is, this is, these are the thoughts that the devil puts in your mind. And if, you, if you're tired, if you're frustrated, if you don't get rest, then you might accept some of those thoughts. Oh, maybe, some, maybe this business is not going to work out. Maybe this marriage is going to fall apart. Maybe my children are going to stay astray. Maybe my, no, 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 stop, stop. You're not thinking like God. Look at me. If that's you this morning, you are not thinking like God. You know why? Because you need rest. Because you need some time to, to, to be rejuvenated. At this point, David got to a low point. Why? Because he was burnt out. And if you're not careful, we can all get to a burnout stage. Life on the run had taken a toll on him. He thought to himself, man, this is what he said. After he's at this burnout stage, he thought to himself, the Bible says, man, you know what? The best thing I can do right now is just go live with the Philistines. If I go live with the Philistines, then Saul and his men are going to stop hunting for me and I will finally be safe. Now, pause, hit pause. Hold on for a minute, David. Aren't you the same dude that said to, first of all, you've been fighting the Philistines 
constantly. But aren't you the same dude that looked at the giant Goliath and called him an uncircumcised Philistine? Aren't you the same dude that acknowledged what you were saying is that the Philistines have no covenant with Jehovah? So you were saying that these people have no covenant with your God, that your God is the only God, Jehovah, that your God is the God who sits on the circle of the earth. And these people have no dealings with your God. These people have no covenant with your God. And here you are frustrated with this man, Saul, to the point where you are thinking about going and moving and partnering and living with them. Why? Because he was tired. Why? Because he was burnt out. And just like that, David took his 600 men. David took his two wives, David took his whole camp, and they went and talked to King Achish over in Maok, and he was like, look, man, uh, I'm tired, you know, I, I just want to hang out with you guys, and the king was like, all right, cool, and so just like that, the Bible says that he moved, and then the Bible does say that word soon got to Saul, that David had fled to Gath in Philistine. And, uh, uh, in Philistine. And so he stopped hunting for him. So yeah, so Saul stopped. It looks like David got what he wanted, but that really wasn't what he wanted. And so sometimes you get, you think you get what you want, but it's not what you want. So what does this mean for you today? Like, okay, Rick, that's cool and everything. Talk to me. Okay, fine. I'm going to talk to you now. I have four things to share with you on this morning. I want you to open up your heart to receive these four things. You ready? Number one, here we go. You, look at me, you must make time for rest. Make time. Not, not just take time, but make time. You got to make time for rest. Rest is spiritual. You, you're like, oh, Rick, I, I don't know. I live off my calendar. Okay, well, then put it on the calendar. Like I'm saying, make time for rest. I personally, Rick Pina, I know great men of God who have had periods in their lives where they wanted to quit on ministry, quit on the church, quit on life, quit on everybody. Like, I mean, just say, forget it. You know why? Because they didn't get time to rest. They wanted to give up on everything because they got burnt out. I have in my family, um, uh, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. One of my cousins, one of my first cousins committed suicide. This guy was a Supreme Court justice in the Dominican Republic, a published author, a dean of a school of law. Um, I mean, like, had, but he got burnt out and he committed suicide. I'm saying there are people, they're, they're, if you're not careful, even a born again believer filled with the Holy Spirit, if you're not careful, you can fall prey to even depression because of a lack of rest. You can delve into depression and that's a terrible place to be because you don't have enough rest. There are pastors right now that are quitting churches every day. There are pastors that are giving, there are pastors that are committing suicide. I'm talking about pastors who love God, who are committing suicide, quitting their churches, walking away from ministry. You know why? Because they did not take the time to maintain their own mental health and they didn't have rest for their spiritual well-being. Like it's dangerous. Let me, let me be honest with you. Like when I go to the Dominican Republic, like uh, I'm going to be going soon. I'm not going to send out today's word. Of course, it would just be a couple of days or something. And then in December, I always, I have to take this, this rest for years. I didn't do it. And the Holy Spirit was like, no, you need time. I need time away from, from everything. Like, you know, you got, it's dangerous to pour your life out. I live, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I live my life for others. I don't really have a care for me. Like I'm blessed. I got it going on. There's not, when, when my friends are like, what can we get Rick? I don't know. Rick, what do you want? I have everything I want. Like I'm blessed. I'm good. I live my life for other people. And when you live your life for other people and you are constantly pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, you got to get filled back up because if you mess around and don't get filled back up, you might be in a bad place. And that's what happened with David. He was like, I'm, I'm in charge of 600 men. I'm in charge of this. I'm in charge of that. Saul keeps coming. Uh, he's the leader. All the pressure is on him. And he did not take the time to get restored, revived, refilled, rejuvenated. It's dangerous. It is dangerous because you were not designed to live without rest. David got tired of living on the run. And once you're tired, like mentally or physically or psychologically, then that's it. You, if you're tired, you're going to make mistakes. 
David made a mistake. This series is about faith and patience. It's about enduring for the long haul. Well, guess what? You're not going to endure for the long haul if you don't get rest. If, you're gonna, if you don't get rest, you're going to get burnt out. And if you get burnt out, you will be of no use to God or anyone else. You got it? This is serious. What I'm talking about today is real serious. All right, number two, don't make permanent decisions based on temporary feelings. And I, I see even Christians do this all the time. Like something happens. Okay, well, something happens. Life happens. Things happen. Like, you know, their boss made a decision they didn't like, or they got a letter in the mail or whatever. And they call me, oh, well, guess what? I'm leaving. I'm doing, whoa, hey, calm down for a minute. I mean, did the Holy Ghost tell you to leave? I mean, like, why, why are you trying to make permanent decisions based on a temporary situation? David was at, was at a low point, and at his low point, he decided to move to Philistine, to Philistine. So, and he wound up living there for a long period of time. He should not have made such an important decision when he was at a low point in his life. So, as a believer, you got to learn from that. Learn from David. Say, you know what? That was a mistake. I'm not going to do that. I'm, don't make real important decisions where you're not in a state like mentally, physically, psychologically, spiritually to do so. If, if you mess around and make a permanent decision, like a real important decision, when you're at a low state, you're going to make a mistake and you're going to pay for it. David wound up paying for it. Number three, sometimes getting what you say you want is not what you want. So, so here's the deal. David said, man, if I go to Philistine, then Saul's not going to come after me. He's going to stop hunting. Okay, he, he went to Philistine, and the Bible says that Saul found out, and Saul stopped hunting. So, okay, David got what he wanted. But then what he wanted was not what he wanted. And so sometimes you say you want something, but you really haven't thought that thing through. You haven't thought second, third order impact. So what you say you want is not really what you want. David had some of the hardest times in his life when he was living in Philistine. He was there, and, and, and we're going to see it as I teach this series, that he went through some terrible situations. You know why? Because what he said he wanted is not what he really, what he really wanted. Some of us, okay, here's a point. God will try to keep us from making a mistake. But if, you're not, if you don't have rest, if you're not listening to God, then, then you won't hear his voice and, and you will mess around and make a, a bad decision, right? So when we think we know what we want, but God knows best, right? God knows better. And, and sometimes we ask God for something and he doesn't give it to us. And he actually leads us another way. And then when it's all said and done, you're like, oh God, thank you. Thank you for not giving me what I said that I wanted. Uh, most of us can, can recall something like that, where we said we wanted something, God didn't do it. And, and you have to thank God for not giving you what you said you wanted. But let me say it this way. God loves us enough to steer us away from foolish decisions. But let me be clear about something. If we are determined, like David was determined, if we're determined to just go do it anyway, if we're too tired to listen or too hard-headed, too foolish, right? If you are just too tired to listen to the Holy Spirit or you're just too hard-headed and stiff-necked and I'm going to do it anyway, then God, guess what? God is gonna. God will allow whatever you allow. God will permit whatever you permit. You're not a puppet. God is not a puppet master. You're a free moral agent. God will stand by and watch you as you reap a negative harvest or negative seed. It's really that simple. God will not force you to be blessed. So if you want to do it, like David wanted to do it, and you go make a decision that's not a God-based decision, even though he's telling you not to do it, then since you allowed it, God will allow it, and you're going to you're going to receive what you chose to receive. You got it? <laughs> All right. Number four and finally, last point as I close. Look at me. I know it's, what I'm about to say today is crazy at, in this point, but it needs to be said. You got to give yourself the license to rest when you need it. And it's, it, and it's almost crazy for me to have to tell you that it's okay to rest. It's almost crazy for me to have to say, hey, listen. It's okay. You can give yourself the license to rest. Like you can approve rest for yourself. Giving yourself the license to turn off your computer, put away your phone, forget your to-do list, 
Release every nagging thought that you have in your mind from your job or your business or your family or your ministry or church. Oh my God, let it go. Like it, like giving yourself the ability to let all that stuff go and actually enter into rest. You almost have to authorize yourself to do it. People acknowledge how important it is to declutter their home or their workspace. But for whatever reason, people don't acknowledge how important it is to declutter your mind and to declutter your heart. Like, you know, uh, there are times, like, I, I know people, and, and, and I've been there too, where, like, it never shuts off. You're, you're, first of all, your phone is right by your head while you're sleeping. You know, it's going off. You pick up your phone, check an email in the middle of the night, text message. No, stop. Let that stuff go. To put the phone in another room if you have to, but you got to get to the point where, where you authorize yourself. And, and there got to be times too where it's okay to turn your phone off. Like, 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 let it go, man. Like you, you need time between you and God. You got to establish a time, maybe in a few minutes a day or sometime throughout the week, definitely sometimes some periods throughout the year where you live without email, no text messages, no to-do list, nothing. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to think about it. I need to rest. Like you need that. People today, and, and, and the fact that I'm telling you that it's okay to do it is crazy, but people today feel guilty. Like, like literally, they feel like they're doing something wrong if they close their computer and turn off their phone. They feel like they're doing something wrong if they, if they take time to meditate and medicate on God's word. No, you need rest. Not just physical rest. I mean, mental, spiritual. You need rest. David didn't get it and he made a mistake. So yes, while it sounds awkward, look at me. Take it from Rick Pina. This is the Holy Spirit talking to you. It's okay to rest, right? Give yourself the approval to rest. As I close, let me just say this. When you slow down and you rest in God's presence and you turn everything else off, you actually give him an opportunity to speak to you. You give yourself an opportunity to listen. How about you shut up while you pray? You can, you, you, if, if prayer is just you talking the whole time, that's not prayer. It's prayer is supposed to be a dialogue. Spend some time in the presence of the Lord. We have a prayer room in this house. Go in, you know, if you wherever it is, you go in that place and rest and allow God to speak to you. If you give yourself a chance to listen and you slow down, you actually give God the Holy Spirit and his word space to work. But if you don't slow down and you don't enter into God's rest and you don't declutter your heart and your mind, your life will be so full of other things that the word can't work, right? The word can't work for you because you have not given it any space to work in you. You got to give the word space to work. Enter into God's rest. Rest is important. Rest is spiritual. You got it? All right, let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father... I thank you for blessing me to understand the importance of sufficient rest. I make time to rest. I get a Sabbath rest every week. When I sleep, you said in your word that you give your beloved sweet sleep. I am your beloved. So I get sweet sleep and precious rest every night. And Father, I labor to enter into your rest. I cease from my own works. I get to the point where my mind is not racing, my heart is not overworking, and my soul is at peace. And I come out of those moments re rejuvenated, restored, revived, and ready to face another day or another week. So by getting sufficient rest, I resist burnout. I never allow myself to get to the point where I'm not healthy enough to make sound decisions. My decisions are sound because they are bathed in prayer. They are based on your word. They are aligned with your purpose and they are congruent 
with the leading of your spirit. Living this way, I can boldly declare that greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, click on the subscribe button, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, what I said today is really important. You might need to listen to this again. This is really important. People are committing suicide. People are walking away from God. People are walking away from church. People are shutting down their businesses. People are stressed out in the middle of COVID-19. You know why? Because they don't get rest. You need rest. This is a message people need. Do me a favor. If this message was a blessing to you, leave me some comments in the chat because I read all the comments and then share this message. This is something people need to hear. Share this message on your social media, on your timeline with your friends. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified when I go live. Go into this day and enter into God's rest. Rest is spiritual. I love you. God loves you more. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.